Okay, after technical difficulties, which really is not that hard to do for the two of us. Um, right. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. I know. Well, you know, things happen. You just move on. Um, right? Isn't that the name of the game these days? Yeah. So we wanted to talk today. We thought we'd, um, you know, get together and just have a, a short talk. Obviously, now just the two of us, and you all can comment on it instead of having it in the group. But um, what, just with the world being so heavy and really every day being traumatic in various ways, um, I'm finding it. Sage is finding it. We're personally finding it. It is just very hard to move forward to heal, to do anything um, helpful for ourselves when we're just kind of in this funk of a world. Mm -hmm. um, so we thought we'd, we'd chat about ways to do it that are attainable, little, little snippets, little bites that we're finding helpful and, um, you know, ideas that we have. Um, so, why don't, why don't you, what do you think, Sage? Why, why, are, why are we so traumatized these days? <laughs> I mean, it's, I think it's, it's a, a multi-pronged traumatization, if you will. Like, like, you know, obviously the political divisions are hard, but per, on a personal level, like people at home with children and trying to work. And if the school, if their schools aren't meeting in person, that the stress level is just through the roof right there. Um, you know, there's financial insecurity, um, and then the just the news bombarding us with the divisiveness in our country, and then like the coronavirus, and how are we dealing with that? And so I I'm really feeling it. You know, like the last three four mornings, I've been waking up at 3:45, 4 a.m., and I can't get back to sleep, and things are just churning. And so self care is really important. And um, I just started reading. Do you know Martin Seligman's work? The guy who um, studied depression and can we inoculate children against depression? Mm. I think he wrote a. Can we? Oh, Learned Optimism was the first book of his I found. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and his latest book is kind of a combination of all of his research. Plus, he's a really good writer, and I like to geek out on those things. But his latest book is called Flourish. And I just read, you're going to love this with the brain science piece. You can geek out on that. But he said, you know, take five, 10 minutes before you go to bed at night and write down three things that went well. Um, and it doesn't have to be big. It can be, you know, I loved the dinner I made or I really enjoyed, you know, the colors on the leaves. And then write down what was it about that experience that you loved and you just do three each night for like a week and see if you aren't feeling better. So since I'm not, I've been struggling, I was like, okay, we're doing this. And last night, Richard and I wrote down our like three things and, and just the accumulation of rewiring the brain, introducing some names who can talk about the power of that um, was just to, to put more focus and so much is challenging and negative to bring in like what went well and reminding our brains about that. Yeah. Um, is inspiring. I've heard there's, you know, I can't quote them off the top of my head right now, but there have been, I've been surprised over the years when studies come out about how effective gratitude, optimism, yeah. that journaling at night and really more towards the, you know, remembering the positive aspects or a gratitude journal or however you want to, um, you know, say that you're putting a, a positive spin or an optimistic spin on your day, but it's, it's really wiring for the positive, the negative beliefs and thoughts are so powerful and so present all the time. And um, I mean, that would be the case personally, even if we lived in this um, fairy tale land that we don't, um, mm -hmm. but the negativity is just, I mean, I also think from a social media standpoint, that's really how those algorithms are designed. They're designed to like get you. And, and unfortunately the fear, that's just how our brains work that, that well, since yeah. we're, we're driven to survive and yeah. we're meant for survival, the fear aspect is going to catch our attention more so than anything else. And that's how 
marketing and that's how these so all the social media channels are and so i think that's um a great idea but i also think thinking where does all where do all the negative mm. beliefs come from all day mm -hmm. um and so as we are leading up to you know i probably this might be the let's just say it's going to be two weeks i'm sure it's going to be more than that of of yeah. division in our countries um specifically i think that i've been talking a lot about this in sessions is, are just like let's let's overall lower our expectations like this is not the time that you're going to make huge strides of healing you're not going to be like you know what the end of october like that's just when it really all came together for me um <laughs> yeah, it was just yeah all that was going on and it just didn't matter i just did great for myself like that's that's just not happening so i think it is intentionally putting these little things. So I love the gratitude journal because I think that's a attainable. It's, and you know, some, I I can't, I have a really challenging time being consistent with every, anything. Yeah. Like I need variation in my day all the time. Yeah. Um, and so that works well for creativity. That doesn't work well if you like have to take a pill every day or like you want to be consistent with a, a good habit. Yeah. Um, and so I've gone through periods where I'll write things down and then it usually like I have to, I, I almost like get too bored with myself. So like I have to do it differently. But I think even when I just crash and lay there and I will specifically just mindfully pay attention to what was good today. Yeah. Just the, those times where, you know, like I looked and like a kid was like laughing or we were like wrestling or something like that. And it was just like a one minute of just you were right there. And, you know, unfortunately, there's only a couple sometimes there's only a couple of those minutes a day and sometimes yeah. it's hard to find them, but you know, little things like a funny thing somebody said, or one time you laugh, like just if you pay attention and even think, and yes, I think it, you really do wire it where most people when you write it down better, but what the hell, just think about it. It's a start. Yeah. Start small, lower your expectations. I love that. And, and there is, you know, you have to find what works for your, you know, how you're wired. And so people that are um, on the more creative end of the spectrum, and I think all of us are creative, so, but I think there's a wiring there that needs novelty and change and newness. Even within that, um, you know, for having that need, there's still behaviors you do every day. I assume you brush your teeth and take a shower and whatever else. So you can anchor the things that like yeah. say, you need to take a pill on a regular basis, anchor that behavior to waiting for the coffee to brew or whatever. Some those those anchors can really help support the tiny habits, which I think we talked about before. Um, yeah. that I often talk about brewing the coffee because you're, you're like it's it's something that people love. It's desired. They do it all the time. So if there's that built in, I almost say like, don't make it the morning before. That's a great strategy if you're saving time. But like actually build in some time what is it three minutes that it takes something like that um yeah. and that would be another time if you crash at night just think of just stand there take a breath think of something positive or it, that's a really good time to um visualize positivity in your day too and if that's literally all you can do for the next couple of weeks yeah. or just try to think about positive things yeah. yeah it's a it's a step in the right direction Absolutely. And, and to know that when things are, you know, more stressful, more tense, that means we need to up our level of self care, even more to balance it. And by self care, I don't mean, you know, oh, I'm not, like, whatever it's, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a big um, thing. I think self care, I've gotten sort of a resistance to the phrase because it's so overused and but like what does it actually really mean and for people who um there's a great article that i share with clients who are i'm going to say trying to recover from trauma but it, as one client said you can't re recover from trauma when there's so much trauma happening in the moment but ha the part of the challenge of self-care is if if you've been so distanced from the self because of experiences in your past, self-care feels like, I don't even know what that means. And so finding your way slowly, slowly into like, what does feel nice? You know, do you like the cup of tea sitting down 
with um, my friend. I just got her, um, uh, her, she calls it her home design porn. <laughs> she loves the home design magazines. So I brought her some of those yesterday. Um, so whatever it is that can just feel like it can nourish you for five minutes or 30 seconds, you know, again, lowering the expectation and just taking care of the body in a way that can feel good and, and countering our brain's wiring for what's wrong with, you know, what's right right now. I think um, saying no as much as possible is, which is for a lot of people is a whole, like, that's not even a possible thing to approach right now. That's too much of a thing. But if it's something that you can do, it does wonders. Yes. When you say, no, 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 not going to go. I'm not going to go. You know, if you, if you're going to a neighborhood little thing or you're getting together with someone outside, it's freaking cold anyway. Just, I mean, and, and, if you're going and you think this is going to be good for my soul, then I would say, say yes to those things, incorporate those things. But if you are like, eh, I'm doing this because say no and plant your butt on the couch and watch a show that you're like, this is a waste of time. That's exactly what your soul needs right now. Yes. <laughs> wasted time because it's not wasted. It's recovery time, which you have none of. Um, and it's very interesting when you start saying no and you start doing these things, mm -hmm. it becomes easier yep. to yep. say like, cause you feel the benefit too. You think like, oh gosh, like that, that actually really helped me. I am not yelling at my kids right now for doing the same thing, you know? And when you notice the benefits, it's so much easier to do that thing. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. it's like your weekend away. I thought, I mean, that should be a quarterly event. Yeah. So well, I went, I went on a weekend away by myself in a hotel room and I told my family, do not call me for a day. I'm not talking to anybody. No talking. <laughs> and I slept when I wanted. I ate when I wanted. And this is one day, one day. Yes. And it was glorious. Yes. And then I got bored of reading. So then I went and got something to eat. And then I went to a shop and then I went back, took a nap. One day of that was like, I think it bought me two weeks of happiness. Yes, yes. And you know, really, so. I think most people just feel like, oh my God, I just, I need so much. And it's actually like, if you, you know, carve out the time, it will pay you back in spades. You know, that one day, yeah. no expectations, no conversation, do what you want when you want, attending to the body, that then you will be paid back in spades. You get home, you're like, oh my God, I'm not yelling at my kids. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, oftentimes when our goals are longer term, you know, yeah. I, a lot of, you know, a lot of us still have weight goals where it's, that's a negative connotation in it to, to begin with and has a lot of depth, but let's say it was something that you wanted to feel better. You wanted to have more energy. You wanted to, you know, maintain a certain weight or something like that. Those are not those are tough goals because they take a while. That means that there's a lot that has to happen for that goal to happen. So you have to really make your goals a lot tinier mm -hmm. and just know that when you are unsuccessful with a goal, your brain demotivates you from even trying to achieve that goal. Yep. So if you make your goal too high and fail, which we've done over and over and over again, Mm -hmm. you're, you're automatically, you know, your hill is getting steeper and steeper. So lower your expectations, make tiny goals. Um, and just know that, like, just put that, all that on the back burner, that this is the first step to get there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you're sort of asking, you're teaching yourself how to read again and mm -hmm. you're, you just have really big books in front of you. That's not, it's not helpful. Like we have to start with the little nuggets. Yeah. And then celebrate the nuggets. Like when, when I, we had the conversation about tiny habits and that celebration piece that's authentic to you, um, can really help wire the habit in. So maybe it's, you know, when you're in the bathroom, you have the book that you're, you want to say, you want to read more 
and it's something that you want to do, but you're not finding the time or making the time for, you pick up the book and you read a page and you put it down and you go, yes, I read a page. And um, I started doing that. I was like, wow, I'm actually making progress over time. But that's the cumulative impact of the tiny habit. And um, the celebration is really important for the wiring of the habit in um, so that the so that you want to do it, you can stay with it. And it's small enough that you you can it's like easy to do. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm not trying to like clean my whole kitchen. I'm going to, you know, when I get up from the table, I'll put one plate in the dishwasher, celebrate. Maybe you do more, maybe you don't, doesn't matter. The habit is that one plate. That's um, why all the fitness tractors are so, are so yeah. successful because one, they measure data. I heard an awesome quote today. It was, you can't manage what you aren't measuring. Measuring. That's a perfect Kristen quote. I know. I was like, yes, that is so right to be um tell the story tell the story of your um when you went to the workshop and you saw your oh my hrv yeah so i've been i've been tracking more so um and this is something i'm doing with clients now too which has been super helpful for data and sometimes honestly like i'm talking to a lot of people and we have all these big goals for change but None of them are attainable right now. And so what is attainable is potentially buy a watch and put it on. Yeah. Live your life. Because yeah. then we're going to start tracking data. And then you can just like, you can look at it and yeah. you can say, hmm. And it's really helpful to make decisions. So I first got it, my body battery, which is an algorithm that just sort of helps you understand, um, which well, it's more complicated than that. But anyway, say it's out of 100. The first day I woke up at 53%. So I was it's like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty tanked. And so then I think I went down to 11 before I was sleeping. So then I woke up the next day. Anyway, so I, I had a great day. I actually went to this retreat. I met with some moms. Uh, we journaled. We talked about our feelings. For me, the whole ride up, it was gorgeous. I listened to podcasts. I even went on a walk by myself. What was interesting though, my body, it just, my nervous system basically was that kept saying, I'm, I'm not recharging. None of those things were recharging me. I sat down, we journaled, talked about our feelings, which this is why Sage loves this story, is because we basically journaled about our feelings. And after four hours of that, what happened? I was actually recharged. And um, it just was, it, you know, so these things are very interesting tools. So for me, if I'm very crashed, you know, having a really exhausting day, potentially it's worth it for me instead of working out or going on a walk, it, maybe at that point I should give, you know, 15, 20 minutes journal and just get out my feelings. And that's a better way for me to recharge than, than a walk. Um, you know, obviously you need to move. There's other things, but um, it, it's just, it's data. So it might, collecting that data might change your behaviors in ways that don't take a lot of work. It's just making a different decision when you have to make a decision anyway. So I'm finding out, I love that you, I mean, it got me inspired, you know, me, I'm like, whatever, if it feels right, I know I'm headed in the right direction, but it got me inspired. Like, Ooh, I want one of those watches because um, then you see like, cause my go-to is like, have I done yoga? Have I gotten out for my walk or hike? And then, and have I done, you know, have I eaten pretty well? And then, but I still feel depleted. And so those aren't, those aren't recharging me in the same way they used to. So finding like, oh, a journaling is going to bring my numbers up that I think it's so great to have that. So you can make a different decision, but I love that story. Well, and it's similar to when I um, did the creativity, the gateless writing creativity coach, uh, yeah. the, the training for um, becoming a gateless writing coach. Um, I spent five days mostly sitting as we're learning, we're doing the gateless writing, we're having the gateless salons, and then learning about how to facilitate the salons. I sat for, you know, it was a lot of sitting for five days. And at that point, my back was a real issue. And I was very worried about how, if that was going to really be problematic towards like day three, four, five of doing mostly sitting. End of five days, no back pain, none. And I was like, oh, so self-expression is important for me. 
you know, speaking my truth. And then the way the gateless writing methodology is you write, and then if you want, you can read what you've written and it's a very safe container. And I know my numbers would have just shot up because I felt so much better. I had no pain. Yeah, your nervous system was in a different place five days later and which has a lot to do with the pain response. So that made, I was like, of course that makes sense to me. Um, and it's not as mechanical for you because that was years after your injury too. Yes. So, yeah. Oh, it's so cool. It's all so cool. So I think what speaks to you, I would say, do something, but make it super tiny. Um, and really, I would say, even if it's just letting go of any expectations you have right now, like, like that alone just might feel like, yeah, screw it. Like, I, I can't expect so much of myself. There's a freaking pandemic. There's a major election. You know, like your kids are possibly at home. They're probably not happy. Like, the, like it's, it's too much. It's all too much. So the only thing we can do is like do something yummy for ourselves and just say, hopefully this too shall pass. Yeah. Well, and if you don't have the cool watch that Kristen does, you know, I often talk to my clients about pay attention to your body compass and I'll lead them through a visualization of, you know, tell me about a time in the last, I don't know, week or month, not a huge challenge, but just like a small challenge, you know, somebody cut you off in traffic or something. And then I lead them to a guided visualization where, what do you notice in the body and give it a number on a scale of zero, which is neutral to negative 10. And, and that that's your body, you're calibrating your body compass. Like, okay, so that, when I got cut off, that was like a negative three and I felt it in my shoulders. So that's your body compass telling you like you're not heading in the right direction. And then I have them erase that memory and think of a, a time where you felt really good. Um, you know, it, whenever it's years ago or currently it, and um, then scan the body, notice where, what is the sensation you feel? Where is it in the body? Zero to positive 10, where, where, do you, where does that land? Oh, that was a five or that was a 10. Um, and then, oh, and then your shoulders felt relaxed and you didn't have the pain. And so then as you go through your day and you're deciding, okay, I really should you know, go to the market or, and you feel like the tension in the shoulders, that's the body compass saying like hot or colder, you know, cold, 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 don't do that right now. But, or do I want to sit on the couch and just stare out the window? A friend of mine texted me the other day and she's like, I'm alone for the first time in six months in my house. Is it okay that I sat on the couch and drank tea and stared out the window? <laughs> I said, yes. But following that urge where the body's like, please, can we just lie down and take a nap or a bath or go outside and you guys are near the beach. So going to the ocean and just sitting and um, follow those and really um, try to plug that in. Even, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, like stop the car, get out of the ocean. Can you park there yet? I don't know. I, don't, I, think, I think more so, but I haven't, I honestly haven't been since the summer. So I don't know. So just finding like you see a beautiful tree. I mean, the colors are a huge resource for us now, but you know, you see a beautiful tree, stop and get out and like soak it in and take yeah. a picture of it. Like whatever you feel inspired to, it's going to be like three minutes. It's fine. You're allowed to do that. Um, and really start speaking like I'm taking care of myself right now. And if you have kids and they're young on the younger side, you can say, let's go visit that tree. It's so beautiful or come sit at the ocean. And if it's out of the usual routine, they'll squawk at first. But if you keep building that in, then they can learn the habits of finding what feels good is yoga with Adrian, who has all kinds of free yoga videos um, on YouTube. Her whole thing is find what feels good, that that can really support you in these times. Yeah, I think that's, that's all we can do right now. And when a window opens and you think, hmm, I think I'm ready to fill it with something else. Mm -hmm. Let's then think about what do you fill it with? What's the, what's, what should you fill it with? Because it may not be a heavy workout to that, that sort of that, like our old belief systems, not that that's bad, but it's just, we're all, we're all healing really. We're all tanked and we're trying to heal together. Yeah. So 
Yeah. Well, thanks, Sage. Thanks for having lunchish with me. Yeah, nice to see you and take care, everyone. And you know, reach out, put questions in the comments, and uh, reach out to us. And yeah, reach out. And and if that's the one thing you do, do that. Ask a question. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. Take care.